Hello, ECU Scholars. Welcome back to another edition of Sharp Shorts. What we're going to do today is put together all this knowledge we've been working on to this point in this year, and we are going to figure out the key to chemistry that is stoichiometry. This is the basic key concept, but what we've done so far this year with everything we've done about learning how an atom is constructed and, and where do you find the protons, neutrons, electrons, and what are valence electrons, what are ionic bonds, what are covalent bonds, um, how do I name things? You know, how do I write the language of chemical compounds? How do I count them with the mold? All of that combines to make chemistry what it is, a very predictable physical science where I can determine what's going to go on in a chemical reaction even before I go to the lab and perform it. Um, we're not going to do any examples of how to do stoichiometry. That's in our next tutorial. But hopefully this tutorial will give you the background of understanding why. And again, I, I, I've really narrowed it down to these three points and say, let's put it all together. Here's what we learned early on. All matter is made up of atoms. We know that, okay? And we know there's 92 naturally occurring elements, which are the most basic of the, of the atoms. We know we can count them. We've learned with using uh, from Avogadro's uh, theories that we can convert from moles to grams and back and forth using the molar mass. So we can count them. We also know, even going back to Dalton and all our atomic theory, that uh, chemical reactions are atoms, they only have three things they can do. They can combine, they can separate, or they can rearrange. And when they do so, they do so in simple whole number ratios. Okay? You, you know, uh, water, uh, the compound is, you know, uh, two hydrogens and one oxygen. So not only in reactions, but we saw in naming compounds and stuff that there's only a set number of different elements that can go together to make, you know, a compound. You can't have H3O, it's H2O um, and stuff along that line, you know, um, um, or at least you can't unless it's a momentary uh, you know, ionic compound, but um, the reality is, is covalent bonding and ionic bonding are very specific in how many things can stick together, and that's held true in that whole number ratio that combines the reactions. So we take all this stuff and we connect it, and it gives us something to, in the math to predict what's going to occur in the reaction. For example, I work at a pharmaceutical company. I want to make, you know, 8,000 grams of aspirin in one batch. I can use the stoichiometry to calculate how much of each reactant I need to start with to end with 8,000 grams, okay, because I know that's how much I want to get. Or I could be in another lab and I could say, well, I'm going to mix this much of A and this much of B. How much product am I going to get? I can calculate that beforehand then go into the lab, do it, and see how accurate I am. Anyhow, um, I can't stress enough that this is the key. If you understand stoichiometry, which is really a cumulative effect of what we've done this year, naming and balancing and math, then any chemistry class you would ever take um, would become that much easier because it is the base math of all chemistry. Let's show you an example. Here I have an equation. Very simple one making sodium chloride table salt. What the equation tells me, what these coefficients we learned in balancing a reaction tells me is I need two moles of sodium to combine with one mole of chlorine to produce two moles of sodium chloride. That's the ratio, a two to one ratio between these two, a one to one ratio between these two, a two to one ratio between these two. A very simplified method of showing this is here's two sodium Here's my chlorine diatomic bound together with that covalent bond, okay? And what's going to happen here is you put those in, uh, say, a water solution together is then um, the effect of the sodium, uh, which, will ion which will be ionized in water, but the effect of the sodium is to come in here and break this bond, okay? And each sodium then would much rather prefer to bond to and make a sodium chloride. Okay? And the reaction gives us that basic ratio. Now the question here is what if I don't exactly have two moles of sodium and one chlorine? Well that's where the ratio helps us. 
say I had, because we know this, say I had three and a half moles of sodium. Well, how much chlorine would I need to go with that? Well, it's a two to one ratio, so I'm going to need half the amount, 1.75, all right? Okay, and what I'm going to get out of that is three and a half moles, okay? Now you say to yourself, well, Mr. Sharp, how do you illustrate three and a half moles of sodium chloride? Well, I'm not. Again, this is a very simplified way of illustrating the ratio. But you get the idea. The mole isn't giving you exactly the specific numbers of molecules. You can connect that. But it gives you the numbers. It gives you the ratio. Okay. And as we'll see when we do examples or as you do your work in class, we have to use moles because grams doesn't compare. Sometimes a larger amount of grams is actually less moles um, based on the molar mass. So anyhow, that's, that's the idea behind it is you have a balanced equation that gives you the exact ratio of how those elements or compounds interact. And you can use that regardless of what number it is. In math, I would say 2 is to 1. S3 and a half is to X, and I can solve for X. Okay, but that's the idea. It gives you an ability, knowing the most basic of how they interact, to calculate with the with the amount of stuff you have, and not being held to these, um, having these exact numbers. The steps that we use, and here I have the um, the uh, kind of the definition and the steps we use. This is the three steps that are always followed once you start with a balanced chemical equation, and that is changing the given mass you have, and that's the key to it. You just have to have one. One mass of anything in that reaction and you can calculate everything else. You convert the given mass to a number of moles, which is divided by molar mass, so you can compare those moles to the mole, how many moles the base reaction tells you. Then you can use the ratio from the base reaction to say, like I just said, this number is to that number, this number is to x, and calculate what the uh, moles of the unknown species you're looking for would have. And then you convert that final thing back to grams so you can actually mass it in the lab. Anyhow, that's hopefully a good explanation. Um, our next tutorial will go through an example um, and uh, hopefully you will find that this is a combination of all the knowledge we've learned to this point. It's nothing new. It's just presented in a new format for you to work with. Uh, until that point, practice up and scholar on, Eastview.